This is a tutorial on how to clean, maintain, or tune up your Dan Wesson 357 Magnum revolver. This is for the small frame models with the removable barrel. So first thing you have to do is remove the barrel. If yours doesn't have a removable barrel, don't even bother trying to do this. Take your, your wrench, you put it in the end of the barrel, there's a couple of notches as you can see. I'm trying to keep everything in focus here. And you unscrew. That done set the wrench aside because you will not be needing that piece anymore unless you've got the official Dan Wesson one. Then you unscrew your barrel because that was a barrel shroud I just took off. And there's a the barrel that is off so to the side. And of course, before I started this video, the gun was checked and it is completely safe. Next you want to do is remove the grip. And your grip will pull right off and there is the screw. Next you're going to want to take the side plate off. The side plate is held on by two screws. This is the small one up here, right there. This is a large one. And that's off. And if you need the Allen wrench for a while, so set that aside. Next, vibrate or take the side plate off. Set it to the side. All right. Now we take this off. Sometimes this will pop loose. It's not a big deal. That's designed to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off right now. Set it to the side. Next, you want to do so. This little little U-shaped piece of metal right here. It's actually the clamp. And sometimes I can get this with the needle nose, and sometimes I need a magnet to get it out. And of course, I'm going to grab the magnet and try it that way instead. Sometimes it helps if you put just a teeny tiny bit of force on the front of the crane. Alright, I got that piece of metal out. And it's that little piece right down there. You don't want to lose that. Next, unlock your cylinder and crane and slide it out and set this to the side. Be careful that you do not lose this little piece here. I will get into taking this down in one second. Okay, now that you've got the the cylinder and crane out, what you want to do, make sure to take that, set it aside, take and unscrew the, the push rod here. Set that to the side. Pull the cylinder out. There will be a spring that goes in here. As you can see, set that aside. There's a metal bearing. Take that and set that aside. And then pull out this. And now your cylinder is completely taken apart, a lot easier to clean. Now if you're doing ba basic maintenance on it, this is as far as I go. I don't go any farther, I don't, don't take anything else. I just take the cylinder off and clean the crane and cylinder. So I'm going to set those aside, but that's how you take those apart. I have taken the cylinder hand and put it back in. That was a piece I took out earlier when I showed you how to take out you know, the crane and the cylinder. I put it back in there to show you how to come to do the rest of this strip. Okay, the first thing you want to do is remove the cylinder hand. What you want to do is to see this little groove in the back. I'm trying to get it. There we go. I think that's focused in enough. This groove, there's this little spring right here. And there's a little hook in it that goes in the back of here. And now the 
hole in the cylinder hand goes right in this hole here. So take that off, set it aside. Now you want to take either a pair of uh, tweezers or needle nose pliers and remove this spring. It goes all from here to there and it connects to the trigger. You want to take and lift this off the trigger and it's under pressure so it takes a little bit and it'll slide back to about here. Next you want to take and lift out the trigger this can be a little tricky and a little difficult because it is on there pretty good. So I'm going to take and lift that out. Then you want to lift out the trigger bar and spring, which is this piece right here. Set it aside. The trigger bar and spring go together like this. There's a little hole. You just make sure it goes in there and set it aside like that. Push the cylinder stop, that's this piece right here, down, and then lift it out and to the left, which is a lot easier said than done in this tight space. I might have to break out my tweezers. Let's see if I can get it. You can see this is how it normally goes in. So you want to lift that out and to the left. And there we go. That's where tweezers come in really handy. Alright, now you want to take and lift this. The trigger spring this is where the needle nose comes in. Up and over this. And that's going to release all tension on the hammer. Now what you want to do is lift the spring up and over the stud here. Then you're going to take the long screw from your side plate. You're going to need that and you're going to take and cock the hammer back. I just start cocking and then get my hand in here. So you take and insert the long side screw in here. And this is where it helps. You want to get that hammer all the way back. And screw this in. And you'll, you can tell when you've gone far enough. Screw it in because you just feel it. There we go, it's in there far enough. And that has taken all the pressure off the hammer. So you've got to take and lift this all up, which is really difficult to do on camera. I'll see if I can get it. Because you want to take the hammer and the hammer spring off. And you'll watch me fumble with this. That's not the easiest thing to do. Alright, come on, behave. There we go. Now I got it out there. Easier to turn it upside down. And I hate this part of the whole thing. You can take this piece off and do some more cleaning. I'm not going to do that just for the simplicity's sake of me and not having to really worry about putting that piece together. But there's a little piston and a spring right here you do not want to lose. So if you can see that right here that's why I'm not taking it apart and when you get these out they can be a pain to get back together okay now on how to reassemble it so what you have to do get this spring here you want to make sure that spring goes over one of the I think they're called pinions or poles and the bottom spring goes over the other one and this can take a little finesse to do I try to get the spring in there first because it's a little bit harder to get in there. But once you do, it'll slide back down just like so. And then you take and you put the trigger spring back over that piston. And that's going to hold it all nicely in place for you. Next, what you want to do, hold the hammer back and remove. the large side plate screw from the back strap or if you want to call this little pull and gently let it forward there you go next you're going to want to put 
the cylinder stop back in. And again, just like taking it out, it can be just a teeny tiny bit tricky. But it's not too bad. So you want to get that back in. Oh, my hands are in the way. You're going to want to get this back in. Just like that. And that allows it to go back up. And I always push it back up. It just makes it a little bit easier in the long run. Next, you're going to put the the hammer and the transfer bar and spring back in. So put those together. I normally do that. That helps a little. Get the hammer back over its post. Push it back in and then push it down. And bingo, that's done. All right, next you're gonna to wanna to take the hammer spring. You're gonna to wanna to lift it back and up and over this post right here. So you wanna take the hammer spring, lift it over this post. That takes a little bit of finesse, but you'll get it. There we go. Make sure it stays down. All right, now we put the cylinder together. And the cylinder's pretty easy to do. And pardon my chair here, it's an old one, and I use it in my workroom. You can put the bearing back in the front, and then you take, I like to do it this way, I put the, I cannot remember the name of this off the top of my hand, I'm sure somebody will correct me. You put this in, you make sure it's lined up, you put that in. Now you put the crane back together, hold them together, put the push rod in and you screw them together. And the smallest piece here goes back in here. So now that's done. Now that you have the trigger hammer spring back in place, which will be just like in picture here. As you can see, and I will zoom in for you. Oops, zoom in. Yep, it's up and over this. Top of the, the trigger return spring there, not on the post. Okay, next you gotta put the the cylinder and crane back together. So Slide this in just like that. It helps if you lock the cylinder in place. Like okay, that. Take your tweezers. Make sure that the crane is all the way forward and you slide the little U-clamp back in. Make sure it's in there just like that. Then next you take the the cylinder hand and you put it back on this little metal wire here where that little groove was and you put that up and over this post here. Ta-da! Next you take the side plate that goes in the front here. Slide these together. Make sure everything's in place. And ta-da! Now you take the small screw that goes on top and the large screw that goes on the bottom and you tighten those in. Now that you have the side plate screws in, you're going to put on your grip. So slide that back in simple and you put the grip screw back in now there's a key in doing this because if you tighten the grip screw too much you can affect how the revolver performs so you just want to get it in there until again it's snug like right there it stopped for me so I'll just give it a teeny tiny turn more so it's nice and snug and there you go, now the grip's on. This is a good time to check for function. It might work.
works just fine. Now you're going to want to put the the barrel and the shroud back on and that's pretty simple. Alright what you need for the barrels you're going to need a point zero zero six gauge just like this one here. This came from an auto parts store for checking like the gap on spark plugs. They're inexpensive and brass so you're not going to harm your gun. First you screw in your barrel. All right, now it's starting to poke through. So we get it in there. You put the gauge in. Okay, that's still way too loose. You want it to be pressing on the gauge so there's just a little bit of resistance. Basically, if you pick the revolver up and it doesn't slide easily out, you're set. So just a little bit tighter than that, but right about there. And I'll check again. Yeah, there's just a little bit of resistance. It just holds it in but slides easily out. Next you put the barrel shroud on. Just like that you take your your barrel nut and you take a look for the the two notches. Two notches on this. Hope you can see that. You want to make sure those are facing out. So you get this started. I like to just get it started and until my fingers start hitting the shroud. Then you take your tool and you just screw it back in. You just want to make sure this will get in there until it's snug. Get a nice snug turn because it's going to stop. And there you go. That's how you do it. Again, function test. Bang, 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 bang. And that's what you do with a Dan Wesson. This will work on the model 14s and 15s. Because they're basically the same revolver. Alright, and with that, I am out. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that helped you out.